Hi, my name is Lucas Smith. I'm a professional Scrum trainer through Scrum.org. Uh, I currently work for Skyline Technologies. We're a software consulting company and Microsoft partner uh, based in Appleton, uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Green Bay. Uh, so we service pretty much the Wisconsin area. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the importance of building um, multi-skilled people and individuals on your team and give you a little bit of a twist on a different way of thinking about it. Many of you have heard of T-shaped people, right? So you've said, hey, we want to develop T-shaped individuals who have a breadth of knowledge and kind of a specialization in one area. Um, maybe you've heard of pie-shaped people who have a little bit more in two areas. But why does this matter? Let's take a look at this, okay? So when I think of skills, any skill that someone has is kind of, there's on a proficiency spectrum, right? So when you start off with a skill, you're probably not producing much value. You know, you're probably having negative value because you're spending time learning it. You might make more mistakes than it's worth it. So you're actually producing negative value to start with. But the initial section of a skill, you gain a lot of value and you, you learn a lot in that section, right? So as I gain proficiency in say testing, for example, I'm gaining a lot of value. At some point, you reach a plateau where you are still, as you, as you proceed in proficiency, you're still gaining value, um, but it's not at as high of a pace, okay? And then if you're really at the high end, you're one of the few people who really understand a concept really well, there's a lot of value you can produce for your company or for yourself, right? So you're the one who's the vanguard in machine learning, you're gonna be way up there, right? There's a huge kind of spike at the end. You can think about sports players as well, right? Playing basketball, you don't know how to play at all, you're not gonna be able to do much. You learn some rules, you can have fun now, you can get some exercise, but you're not gonna be playing the NBA, right? There's only a couple people that make it there to the NBA and they're making millions of dollars a year. So, the problem we have in organizations is we just think of people in the specialty, right? So if I have a QA person or a developer and they're roughly there, we spend all our energy trying to increase their skills in this one area, right? Yeah, it provides some value, but if they're not kind of at this end where we're gonna get a lot more value out of them or for, them, for their sake, then probably what we wanna start thinking about is what is another skill we can add or help them grow in, right? That can either help their team, help you if someone's out so you don't have as many knowledge silos, um, or even just provide value, right? The cross-domain knowledge is really where a lot of the creativity and value is driven. So what we wanna think about is probably one specialization, really, for each person, but then think about some other skills that they could develop, right? If I'm a, de if I'm a developer, maybe a good one would be testing, right? Maybe I get to here. Maybe I can get to here on my testing ability. But then maybe I wanna think about another one, right? Where, where is this mix that I have in my organization and for my individuals? A good place to be would be to ask someone, hey, what are you interested in learning? But we have to provide this environment where they can learn and they don't feel bad about producing some negative value up front, right? If you've got a really good developer, their first thought is, hey, well, I'm, I'm spending some time somewhere, but I don't think I'm really effective. We wanna coach people to get them to the point where their skill is adding value, but so this is investing in your people in the long run. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you.